We are now ready to answer the question about what the derivative is for a to the x for a bigger than 0. We looked at a special case when our a was e, and we discovered that its derivative is itself, but it was the only a value that had this property. So we are interested in finding out what the derivative of a to the x is for all the other values of a. Now we're going to use what we know in order to answer what we don't know. And in particular, I'm going to use the properties of the exponent, exponential function. Since e to the ln of x equals x, because it's a composition of inverse functions, this means that e to the ln of a to the x equals a to the x. What goes in to the composition of inverse functions comes back out. That's what this rule says, and we're applying it to a to the x. So this is a nice technique used in order to get a to the x in terms of e. All right, now we're going to use the properties of logs. And so if we have natural log of a to a power, we can bring that power down in front. So this is e to the x times ln of a. All right, so remember, our original question was, what's the derivative of a to the x? Well, since these are equivalent, it means it's the derivative of e to the x ln of a. Now, we're going to apply the chain rule here. This is just some number, so it's e to the x times that number. So remember, the derivative of e to the u is e to the u times the derivative of u. So here, it's e to the x ln of a times the derivative of, of this piece right here, which is just ln of a, right? Just like the derivative of 3 to the x is 3, the derivative of x ln of a is ln of a. It's just a constant. Now, remember what e to the x ln of a is? It's actually a to the x. So the final answer is a to the x times the natural log of a. That is the derivative of a to the x for a greater than zero.